Welcome to Cyrus Chess World. In today's chess video, we are going to look at in most famous game chess history played between Stefan Levinsky and Frank Marshall. This game is popularly known as the gold coins game because it is believed that spectators showered gold coins after the final move by Marshall. Let's begin. Levinsky playing as white and Marshall is play with the black pieces. Levinsky started with d4, Marshall played e6, then comes e4 taking control of the center. Black plays d5 transposing into the French defense, then knight c3 defending e4, then Marshall comes up with an unusual looking pawn to c5. Actually, Marshall was quite famous for his opening tricks and traps. He seems to be another of those gambits. But anyway, Levinsky didn't fall for it and he continued with knight f3, knight c6, white takes the pawn, black pecs back. Then Levinsky goes for bishop e2 preparing to castle. It seems like a slow move. A much aggressive move would be bishop b5 pinning the knight. But why chose bishop e2 instead? Black developed his knight. White castles kingside as expected. Then black goes for bishop e7 preparing to castle. Then comes bishop g5 attacking the knight. Black castles kingside. Finally, white decides to take this pawn. Now this d pawn is under threat. Therefore, black defends it with bishop to e6. White centralizes his knight. Bishop takes on c5, attacking the knight. Here, Levski took the bishop with his knight, which is not great of him because after black takes with the pawn, he gets two powerful center pawns and also the semi open file for his rook to attack the king side. After white went for bishop g4, attacking this e6 pawn, black cannot take with the knight. Because it is pinned to the queen, therefore Marshall goes for q on d6, removing the pin and also defending this pawn. White saves his bishop, moving into back to h3, then black brings his other rook into the game, moving into e8. Then comes q on d2, connecting his rook. Then comes bishop g b4. Pinning the knight and threading knight e4, which is some very nasty attacks like this. Therefore, let's take the knight and black recaptured with this rook. White brings it other rook in the game, moving into d1, then comes q and c5, putting additional pressure on this knight. White goes a nice little tactical idea. He first plays Qt2, black takes with the bishop, pawn takes and queen takes. White sacrifices pawn temporary. On the next move, Levski regained this pawn by taking this rook. Now black cannot take that rook, but it is forced to a checkmate in the next few moves just like this. Therefore, in this position, Marshall did not take the rook and went for knight d4, attacking the queen. We reached the critical position in the game and here's where the white blundered. The best move for white, which is queen e4, that is maintenance pressure on this important e6 square and also attack the knight. But anyway, Levski played in the game was queen h5, attacking the rook. Then black simply allowed develop his rooks on this dangerous f file. Now white's rook is troubled, so he saves it, moving to back to e5. Now Marshall simply captured on f2 because of it has back rank issues. But instead of that, he decided to play rook h6, attacking the queen. For white, queen g4 is not a good option because after that following move sequence, while loses this active rook. Therefore, in this position, Levinsky goes for q and g5. Now, first in your sequence, we have two glorious moves 
coming up. First, Marshall took the bishop. Taking with the pawn is disaster because knight f3 is a family fort and white loses a weakened. Therefore, in this position, white tried to rook to c5, attacking the queen. As you can to see, black is completely dominating this game. There are many ways to finish things off. But one of the dramatic moves of the century awarded this game of title of American Beauty. Marshall, epic, queen to g3, most beautiful move played in this position. In fact, it is spectacular. Spectators showered gold coins after this move. This is a final nail in the coffin, and after which Levski resigned. Let's see why. Even though White has lot of options, none of them actually work. Let's see one by one. See, Black is ready to checkmate on the next move with Queen X2. So I have to go to something new. If we take the Queen with the H pawn. Then knight e2 is straight away checkmate. If we take with the f pawn, then black can go for knight e2 check. King h1 is forced. Rook f1 is a checkmate. If we free up some square for the king to a escape, like rook b1 for example, then it is results in a checkmate just like this. If we play f4, free this square for the king. Then black can go for knight e2 check. King h1 is forced. Queen h2 to make the white king just like this. If you something like play queen e5 attacking this diagonal, but then black can go for knight f3 check. Taking with the f pawn, h g pawn is obviously not possible because of this check. Therefore, white had to move his king. Then rook h2. Is a checkmate. If we maybe something like play queen takes on g3, then black can go for knight e2 check. King h1 is forced. Knight takes the queen with check. Taking with the h pawn is obviously not possible because of this rook check. Taking with the f pawn results in a checkmate just like this. Therefore, white had to move his king. Then black can go for knight e2 check. King h1 is forced, and black can save his rook to end up with an extra piece, which is a match-winning advantage. But it is being attacked by the pawn. If you like my video, then click on the like button below. Don't forget to comment, subscribe my channel, so I can give you more.